after four years of extensive renovation that left no room untouched, including major upgrades to decades-old utility systems. The Washington, D.C. Temple of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has re-emerged, renewed, rejuvenated. Now for the first time in nearly half a century, its doors are open to the public to come and see before its rededication. To Latter-day Saints, this gleaming sacred structure with its vertical design represents the purity and enlightenment of God ever reaching heavenward. When you come here, you feel something very different than you feel anywhere else. It's the most sacred place on the face of this earth. The temple is very striking from the outside, and obviously the iconic view from the beltway, but much more impressive than the actual physical structures are what takes place inside. The 160,000 square foot temple that appears as a shining monument to millions sits on 52 acres as the church's third largest temple. This is a historic uh, icon in the Washington, D.C. area. But when it began, the traffic reports would talk about the Mormon temple. Now, 50 plus years later, it's just the temple. So it's the temple for everybody in Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. temple is an iconic landmark here in D.C. So it's exciting now that we get to share that with our family and friends. The Washington, D.C. temple is the first to be built by the church in the eastern United States since Mormon pioneers went west more than 125 years before. The challenge, to design a temple worthy of that historic significance. The architects who were designing this temple recognized the opportunity they had. They wanted something that would feel right for a place that we were coming back to and that had a history to it. But we're also looking to where we're going to be in a hundred years. The design of the building matches that of the Salt Lake Temple. Six Spires has a very similar footprint and it was intended to be that way with the idea that the Salt Lake Temple represented the foundation of the church and the Washington DC Temple represented the international future of the church. It too would have three towers on each end but topped with gold spires, becoming the tallest temple of the church. On the east towers of the Salt Lake Temple, um, you have three spires that represent the Melchizedek priesthood, the higher priesthood. On the west side, you have three towers that represent the Aaronic priesthood. Those towers together represent the power of God manifest on the earth. The project broke ground in 1968. I got a job as a construction worker here. Randy Cohn had just returned to his hometown after living the hippie lifestyle in San Francisco's Haight-Ashbury seat. When I came here, I didn't think that there was much future for mankind, uh, for myself, uh, and the world gave a lot of proof. But that chance hiring made all the difference in Randy's life. It's changed my life in every significant, meaningful way. In the time I've spent in the church, the tools that it's given me to be a far better person than I would ever imagine are constant and continual. Today, cleaned and repaired, the temple's exterior appears as it did nearly 50 years ago when workers like Randy completed it. The exterior of the temple is an Alabama white marble. Some of that marble cladding was damaged and needed replacement. The only problem? The quarry that furnished the unique marble closed in the late 1970s. But Dan says something providential happened. That same Alabama quarry reopened just before the renovation project started in 2018. We were able to find uh, that exact stone because it comes from the exact same quarry. The manicured temple grounds that cover about nine acres underwent an improved transformation as well. The area features 260 new and relocated trees and nearly 10,000 shrubs and perennials that create better flow and a more pedestrian-friendly atmosphere while complementing the native foliage and wooded surroundings. A one-of-a-kind east bronze exterior door features medallions of the earth, moon, and constellations that represent eternity. 
Walkways and paving were replaced. A new fountain replaced the old. A new reflection pool and stairs were added near the visitor center. The serene surroundings only add to the experience as one enters the temple and the richly appointed foyer. When you come through, you'll see the intention being that we bring it back to its original state only with 21st century additions. What has been done to refresh and refurbish the interior is just absolutely stunning. Refurbished art glass behind the reception desk, depicting the tree of life described in the Book of Mormon, representing eternal life and the love of God, is now more visible. We have been able to install LED panels behind each stained glass panel, and that's really opened up uh, the view of what that is and what it represents. The symbolism of light, also found in the exterior art glass at the main entrance and east and west towers. Coloration of the glass starts in a darker tone and goes up to the top of the spire. It's almost white, which really signifies kind of the ascension of light as we learn and grow to try to be more like our Heavenly Father. The same company of artisans who first created the stained glass windows were commissioned once again to restore them. Each individual piece of glass was removed cleaned and reinstalled in updated frames, all by hand. The intention was put it back exactly how it was before, but bring it into the 21st century. Passing from the entrance to the windowed bridge, guests will notice white marble flooring, a custom geometric patterned rug, and elegant furnishings. To me, the word that uh, comes to mind is light. All of a sudden, you can see the tree of life and this wonderful white Alabama marble and then you walk down the bridge and you just feel this sense of light and joy and presence in the spirit of the temple. Crossing the bridge suggests a departure from the cares and concerns of the world towards celestial tranquility. People will be able to come here and feel the peace of the Lord and be able to be inspired and feel his love. Original artwork portraying heralding angels and the Savior's return in his glory is the focus upon entering the domed oval-shaped rotunda. Millwork from fine African anagra hardwood with maple trim lines the walls. Here, guests will experience the mid-century modern design. Modern design is really about celebrating material and craftsmanship and the kind of texture of spaces. A recurring theme found throughout the temple. You see it in the wood, and you see it in the stained glass, and you see it in the furnishings. They are not richly ornamented, but they are beautiful in their straight, simple design and texture. Also prevalent, the artfully incorporated pointed arch. The Gothic arch is really intended to help us look heavenward to raise our eyes up above the temporal things of the world and focus on things that are more eternal. The oval light fixture with beveled cut and frosted glass pays homage to the footprint of the Washington DC temple in each decorative pane. Images of Jesus Christ fill the halls of the temple, reminding guests this is the house of the Lord, accompanied by other original oil paintings from a variety of artists. In the bridal room, Sleekly styled modern design furnishings complement the ornate decor of cherry blossom carpeting, while crystal sconces and chandelier illuminate the room with warmth. In the baptistry, following the Savior's commandment that all must be baptized, temple patrons can act on behalf of those who did not have the opportunity in this life by entering the waters of baptism in their place. The font, shouldered by oxen made of terrazzo, represent the 12 tribes of Israel. The pointed arch theme carries over to the top floor of the temple, to the large assembly room reminiscent of the historic temples of the 19th century. Here, senior leaders of the church can meet with local leadership to discuss the work of the church. The domed oval motif is seen in some of the 10 ceiling rooms of the Washington DC temple. This is where marriages are performed that unite couples and their families forever. It's such a privilege to go through those ceremonies and be bound more purposefully to Heavenly Father. Decorative gold leaf adorns the walls and dental molding, and crystal chandeliers enhance and warm the overall feel of the spaces. In one of six instruction rooms, devout members learn about God's creation 
the purpose of life and how to become more like Him. In the temples, we learn about God's plan for His children. We learn about the role of Jesus Christ as our Savior and Redeemer. And as we learn about the true nature of God, that changes us. The Celestial Room. Entering this sacred space symbolizes the ultimate progression one can achieve toward heaven itself. It takes away the craziness of the world and it allows a spirit for me to learn of myself and of my Father in heaven. The domed oval motif, an influence of Gothic arches, culminates in the celestial room, accented by intricate gold leaf that highlights the walls and moldings. Inspired by the angular lines of the temple, the stunning newly added Austrian crafted crystal chandelier further augments the oval motif and stands as a central focus to the 12 supporting chandeliers set in their individual pointed arch alcoves. Beautifully crafted chairs and couches, evocative of the modern movement, showcase elegant handmade tables and intricately crafted consoles. It's beautiful the way it has come together. I think that uh, just being in this peaceful atmosphere, the real meaning of the temple and the reverence for Jesus Christ will be even more profound. For the first time in nearly 50 years, those of all faiths are invited to come and see and feel the exquisite beauty and peace found within these sacred walls. We share with our friends the things that are of most importance to us. And we, we want people to come and enjoy the beauty of the temple.